Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. I have a question for you. Woo! Does anyone here this morning know a 2020 Hazen grad? Does anyone here this morning love a Hazen grad? <clears throat> Does anyone here this morning want to celebrate and congratulate a Hazen grad? If so, let's make a little noise! Woo! It is my absolute distinct pleasure to welcome all of you this morning to our Hazen 2020 graduation celebration. Thank you all so much for coming to this, what will hopefully be the most unusual graduation in Hazen's history. So, um, it's been a long road to this day, and particularly the last three months have made it even longer and stranger, but let us today not let that fact get in the way of what we are here to do today, which is to honor and celebrate our graduates' graduation. So thank you so much for coming. I want to uh, welcome you. This is part one of a two-part graduation this year. Uh, today we will be only handing out the diplomas and the scholarships. The rest of the graduation, when the speeches and the accolades that our graduates so greatly deserve will happen tonight at seven o'clock, broadcast over our network, our local network cable station, and also streamed with a link on our website. So please tune in and take part of that ceremony as well. So I wanna just, help people uh, a little bit with how things are going to work here this morning. In general, we are going to go alphabetical with one exception. We will be starting with the family a little out of order in order to accommodate their being able to be here today. Other than that, we will go in order. Um, we would like, uh, once the graduate's name is called, for the graduate to come forward to the stage accompanied by any members of the family that would like to take photographs. Um, we would also like to open up a little space during that time for family members to do what we cannot do today, which is handshakes, hugs, any kind of celebration that you would like to have here in front of the stage is perfectly invited here this morning. So, um, when the graduates are called and they come to the center of the stage, they will receive their diplomas. We're going to ask them all if they would pose for a moment in front of the podium so that their family members can take um, their photographs. So, following today's graduation ceremony, we will be having the graduation celebration parade led off by our school bus over here, followed by the fire engines, and we hope that as many of us uh, who are interested in that will join us in that celebratory parade following our diploma distribution this morning. So, without any further ado, the moment that we have come here for, the following folks have, after many years of toil, untold headaches and challenges reached a point where they are now recipients of a 2020 Hazen Union School Diploma. And today our school, our superintendent, and our school board is here to bestow that honor on you. Can we hear one last round of applause for our entire graduation? We begin this morning with Dylan Jason Ernest Perry.
Just pause right here. Yep, yep, perfect. Look right out. Perfect. Um, am I allowed to shake any of your guys' hands or not? No. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you. Good well job, done. Good work. Thank you. Bailey Dennis Allaire. I know he's here somewhere. I was quite sure I saw Bailey out there somewhere this morning. Ryan Nicholas Allen. Ryan is a Green Mountain Tech and Career Center committed learner. <clears throat> Nicole Bailey. Jenna Morgan Bassett. Jasmine Bell. Congratulations, Jazz. Anthony Wyatt Bellevance. Tyler Billings. 
Do you think that everybody else is here? Or? I don't think, I don't think he's, oh, here he is. <laughs> Nice job. Hang on. Dylan J. Coder, magna cum laude. Congratulations. Pause for some photos. Mariana Florence Considine. Magna cum laude. National Honor Society and the Governor Phil Hoff Vermont Honor Scholarship. Nick Crum is not here today. Nicholas Crum, and although <laughs> Nicholas cannot be here with us today, but I want you to let him know he is here. Nicholas! <laughs> Cody Christopher Davison. Cody is the recipient of the Tink Eastman Award. Do you know anything about what might be happening? We should have, we should have figured that out. Morning, Cody, step right up here. Press conference, look that way. <laughs> Devinger. Congratulations, Cara. Our next recipient is in Germany this morning, but she will hear us and she will feel our love. Tan Biktau Do. Hunter L. Dupree. Okay, sorry. 
Congratulations, Hunter. Thank you. Wish I could shake your hand, man. I don't believe our next recipient is here this morning with us either, but he will also hear us. Let him know. Jordan Lee Ewan. <laughs> Windsor Marlowe Fairbank. Windsor. Don't want to miss that one. <laughs> Jason Roy Foster. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Madeline Grace Foster Pudva. Maddie is a member of the National Honor Society and the recipient of the Leon Cobb Scholarship. Congratulations, Kate. Michelle is cum laude and is the winner of the UVM Green and Gold Scholarship. Congratulations. <laughs> Kai Catherine Agen Gilbert. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Love your mask. Love your mask. <laughs> Can't miss a photo off. So sorry. Can we take a picture? 
No zooming. Audrey F. Grant. Audrey is cum laude, a member of the National Honor Society, a recipient of the Trish Geisler Memorial Award, the Hardwick Memorial Class Spirit Award, the Kiwanis Award, the Morrisville Rotary Club Dr. Phil Chauvier Memorial Scholarship. Yeah. Congratulations, Audrey. Okay, so we're going to let Ozzy give this diploma. Joey Marie Hall. <laughs> Joey is cum laude and the recipient of the Dave Morse Memorial Scholarship. Congratulations, Joey. Erin Margaret Halperin. Congratulations, Aaron. <laughs> Xavier Hart Marion. Xavier is cum laude, the recipient of the Hazen Union Student Council Award, the Woodbury Fireman's Auxiliary Scholarship, and the Raymond Hussey Memorial Scholarship. Congratulations, Xavier. Get your flower, boy. <laughs> Sydney Lee. Hayden. Zoe Hislop. <laughs> Zoe is magna cum laude, a member of the National Honor Society and a recipient of the Concept II Scholarship, the Raymond Hussey Memorial Scholarship, 
and the Samantha Bro Brochu Memorial Scholarship. Congratulations, Zoe. Edward Joseph Hoisington, Jr. Good morning, congratulations. Caitlin Kaiser. <laughs> KK is a member of the National Honor Society. KK, congratulations. Congratulations, Dylan. Dylan, Dylan, this way. Well done. McDonald Lamphier. McKenna LaPierre. Abigail Faye Laundry. <laughs> Abby is this year's recipient of the Fallen Soldier Award in memory of Tristan Selfworth.
Aurora, Marie, Olivia, Lawrence. Morning, Aurora. Congratulations. Thank you. Love your cap. <laughs> Where are these masked people? <laughs> Elijah. Gray, Lou Smith. <laughs> Elijah is graduating summa cum laude and is the recipient of the Gene Hackett Award. I'll do the model later. To the skies. <laughs> Emily May Lurie. Well done. Stephen Michael Martin. Congratulations, Stephen. Emma Joanne McAllister. Congratulations. Hunter Allen McAllister. Congratulations, Hunter. Stop, stop. Hold on. over for the photos. <laughs> Morgan Elizabeth Mercier. Congratulations, Morgan.
Hunter Adam Michaud. Hunter is a member of the National Technical Honor Society and a recipient of the Catherine Eastman Memorial Scholarship. Aaron C. Muller. Aaron is a Green Mountain Tech and Career Center committed learner and a recipient of the Ready Alchemist Foundation Award. This me? Yep. Congratulations, Aaron. Colton Nimi. <laughs> Congratulations, Colton. Graydon Michael Joseph Noyes. Congratulations. Up here for the photo op. Anthony Patrick. Anthony is a recipient of the Concept 2 Scholarship. Thanks for coming. Fabian Rays. Congratulations, Fabian. Nice to have you here today. Photo op, photo op, a little paper. Calvin Paul Raymond Robertson. <laughs>
Congratulations, Kelly. Julius Gates Rosendahl. <laughs> Congratulations, Julius. Pause for the play. Rebecca Roy. Alexander Patrick Sanger. Congratulations, Alex. Thank you. Love your mask. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Ernesto Schumann Sola. <coughs> Congratulations, Ernesto. Cynthia Stevens. <laughs> Kaylee Ann Thorpe. Remington Eugene Bogenschneider. Families, friends, neighbors, staff, please join me in arousing congratulations for the class of 2020!
Before we begin our parade, the next section of our celebration today, there are a few thanks that are in order this morning. First of all, my most greatest thanks to all of you for joining us this morning with your great sense of spirit and celebration. We appreciate it enormously. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Secondly, I want to extend our thanks to our facilities team for all the work they did this past week to beautify our campus and make this a welcoming place for everyone this morning. So please join me in thanking them. I also want to give thanks this morning to an eighth grader Emma Bador, who built this beautiful barn quilt, which graces our podium this morning. And Emma has committed herself to building a new barn quilt for every graduation going forth. So thank you so much, Emma. Finally, I want to announce this year's Salutatorian, Mariana Considine. This year, Hazen Class 2020, Valedictorian, Elijah Lusmith. Friends, families, and neighbors, I invite you to join us in a parade through town that will wake anyone who still might think it's a good idea to be in bed. Let's make some noise. Let's bring the spirit of celebration. Let's bring this honoring of 2020 to the streets. I'm Ozzy. I was born and raised here in Hardwick, and I myself graduated from Hazen 25 years ago. As a kid, I had one of those red radio flyer wagons, but more about that later. All that aside, I want to welcome everyone to today's extraordinary and unique celebration. Today is a very special day for you, the members of the senior class, for your loving family and friends who are gathering near and far to celebrate you, and for your teachers who have encouraged you along the way. For those of you who may not know, I have a special bond with this class. There are several members who have been a part of my life since the day they were born. And for several others, I started my teaching career the day that they started kindergarten at Lakeview Elementary. I have had the distinct pleasure to watch them grow from that day. And for the entire class, it's been an honor to be your advisor, to work through things with you, and to be able to be a part of today's festivities and to celebrate this milestone in your lives. I know this year has taken a turn and hasn't gone as we had hoped, but try to think about the things we've learned and experienced. And remember that the things that are really most important in life are not things at all. They are the, our connections to those in our world. This reminds me of something that Margaret Catter said. Some days we skip along, pulling our wagon with great confidence, so full of energy that the load seems light. Some days the load seems heavy and we need someone to help us pull our wagon over the bumps in the road. Some days we're just tired. We sit in our wagon and let someone else pull us along for a while. And some days it's kind of nice to share a little red wagon with a friend. So as you think about yesterday and you make plans for tomorrow, keep in mind there will be times when you can help pull someone else's little red wagon for a while. And after all, helping to pull each other's little red wagon is what makes it possible to face the challenges that the day brings. So to be short and sweet, I'd just like to say thank you. Thank you for allowing me to share in your lives. Thank you for the days that you helped to pull me and my little red wagon along the way. 
And now, I would like to extend my heartfelt congratulations to you, the class of 2020. You are strong, you are determined, you are committed, you are unstoppable, and you are unbreakable and undefinable. I am proud to know each and every one of you, and I look forward to hearing all the great things that you do as you continue on your journey. So keep your head held high, because each and every one of you is made for greatness, and I know that you will make a difference in this world. This morning, our graduates received their diplomas in part one of our 2020 graduation ceremonies, which took place in Hazen's parking lot in what is certainly to be remembered as the most unique graduation in Hazen's history. Tonight in graduation part two, we back up and offer our grads the congratulations, acknowledgement, and accolades they so greatly deserve and usually would have gotten before they got their diplomas. But as we know it, the world has turned upside down. Tonight, as I speak to you from my home and you listen from yours, I ask us to invoke our most creative imaginations and envision ourselves in a space together. Perhaps our school gymnasium packed with members of the community, immersed in the great joy and celebration of these graduating seniors, decked out in front of us in their glorious gowns, the shining hazen red and blue, their tasseled graduation caps perched precariously on their heads, the cheering and clapping, the hoots and hollers, the beaming smiles, and the tears of our greatest pride. Our kids, our babies, graduating. It is in this spirit of jubilation that we send a loud and clear message to the class of 2020. You are not the forgotten class. Oh no, in fact, quite the contrary. You will probably be remembered as the most remembered class ever. Let today's celebration be a rousing demonstration of that as we honor you with our enduring admiration, our humble respect, and our ubiquitous love. These have been trying times for all of us. And graduates tonight, I ask you to join me in appreciating the hard work and enduring perseverance of our amazing faculty and staff who have risen to this great and unprecedented challenge to support you on your path to graduation and life beyond. This year, they were called upon literally overnight to reinvent their teaching without you actually ever being there, while simultaneously managing their own survival and the challenges of home and family amidst the fears and uncertainty caused by the greatest pandemic in modern history. Their efforts have been nothing short of remarkable, and our appreciation is nothing but profound. In addition, special appreciation goes out to your families parents and grandparents for their unconditional support for you over these many years. The pandemic has added untold amounts of stress to your families and challenged them with being both full-time caregivers and teachers amidst all the worries of health, mental health, quarantine, finances, and an uncertain and unpredictable future. Graduates, tonight we owe our families our deepest gratitude. Yes, my young friends, this has been quite a year. 2020 began with the tragic loss of your beloved classmate, our young son, brother, and friend, Finn Rooney. Finn's loss deeply rocked our world. Five months later, 
our world was rocked once again by the murder of George Floyd. And between those tragic bookends, the theme of loss has prevailed throughout the year. The loss of the entire final third of our senior year, the precious opportunities to spend time together with our friends, the loss of the prom, the senior trip, the yearbook signing, and today the lost opportunity for the closure and catharsis that a traditional graduation usually offers. For whatever consolation it is worth to you graduates, let me just share with you on behalf of all of us at Hazen that the loss of your daily presence in our lives over these last many months has been unbearable. Seniors, the Times has also left me as your principal forever wondering what, just what would the 2020 senior class prank look like? Graduates, I have promised you that once we are safely on the other side of this madness, we're gonna hold a grand party in your honor. And oh my goodness, what a party it's gonna be. Yes, my friends, the loss of this year has been overwhelming. It has been on our minds and in our faces every day. But at times like these, when we feel the loss so painfully evident, we must also recognize the opportunities that such times offer us for reflection. And we must pause and ask ourselves the important question, but what have we gained? And though the jury is still out on the answer to that question, I urge us to recognize that life gifts us with the grace of balance, a kind of eternal equilibrium. Life and death, sorrow and joy, loss and gain. Our human history has shown us that times of crisis also offer us silver linings the lemonade in the lemons, if we can see it, the phoenix rising gloriously from the ashes. In the cauldron of crisis, we find new resolve, new determination, new resiliency, new strength. As the old saying goes, when the going gets tough, the tough get going, and graduates, if there was ever a time that needed new strength, that time is now. Our young friends, this morning, we placed diplomas in all of your hands. These diplomas are invitations to enter two great arenas of life, the arena of life's privileges and the arena of life's responsibilities. The privileges are rich and rewarding, and the responsibilities are daunting. The diplomas are now in your hands. Today, we are passing the baton. And today, our world is crying. We need a vaccine. Today, our planet is in crisis. We need sustainability. Today, our cities are burning. We need justice. Graduates, we need your youth and we need your strength. There is an inspiration in our midst these days. Young people all across our nation, emboldened by this new strength and driven by the outrage that our nation has failed to make good on its most precious promises. Our youth are taking to the streets. Our youth are raising their voices and demanding that America now, once and for all, be the America that we love, the America that we live and die for, the America of liberty and justice.
for all. In the words of James Weldon Johnson, lift every voice and sing till heaven and earth ring ring with the harmonies of liberty let us rejoicing rise high as the listening skies let it resound loud as the rolling sea He's in graduates, class of 2020. From all of us at Hazen, to all of you, congratulations, best wishes, and much love. It is now my distinct pleasure to welcome to our presence, our first graduate speaker, Aurora Lawrence. Aurora has been a bright and gentle personality around Hazen for many years, lifting all of our spirits. Thank you, Aurora, for sharing your spirit with us this one last time. Hello, everyone. If you don't know me, my name is Aurora Lawrence. I have been going to Hazen for the past two years, and it was a really rough start. I was coming from a school where I was very badly harassed and bullied. Coming to Hazen was my best choice. My, my old school was a stressful experience, and coming to Hazen offered me a welcoming, joyful environment to focus on graduation and my future. I have met so many amazing people and had so many opportunities I never thought I would have. Last summer, I got a real college experience in entrepreneurship, and I got to learn more about my interests in business. Everyone I met at Hazen helped me grow with all of their support and understanding. It means the world to me. I am so excited and relieved that we are graduating today, even if it isn't what we imagined it would be. After 14 years of school, we finally get to graduate and move on to more things in life like work and college. I am so proud of the people that we have become and what we have accomplished all together. This year has been stressful. In January, we lost the sweetest person with the brightest smile I had ever seen. I met Finn at a Rube Goldberg Science Convention for 7th and 8th graders. <sighs> After that day, I thought I would never see him again. We reconnected on Facebook later that year. And a few years later, when I found out that we were that he went to Hazen, I was so excited to tell him that I was going to be as well. When I told him I was transferring to Hazen, he got excited and told me that I would fit in just fine. Finn had the ability to lift my spirits and bring out the confidence in me that few have ever done. High school gives you the strength for a strong future. Graduation is a symbol of moving on to great things, and I believe that we all have that potential. COVID-19 was a devastating change to our year, but we are pushing through strong. We didn't let it stop us from celebrating our accomplishments, which is why we are still having graduation. Over the past few years, we have had so many hills and mountains, and with the support of our families and teachers and peers, We've overcome them. I picked a quote to read. It says, Like wildflowers, you must allow yourself to grow in all the places you never thought you would. Despite the amazing highs and devastating lows, we did it. Congratulations, class of 2020. We graduated. Our second graduate speaker is no stranger to public speaking at Hazen and around the greater Hardwick area. She is known for her great passion and her gentle kindness. Please welcome Kai Gilbert. <clears throat> Hello everyone. I hope you're all safe and healthy. I would like to start by acknowledging the restrictions and horrors of COVID-19 and the global impact that is being felt as we speak. These crazy times have brought lots of new stresses. So thank you teachers and staff 
for working hard to accommodate, teach, and connect with us still. When I sat down to write this speech, I was immediately overcome with the weight and loneliness of isolation. Then, as I looked outside and saw the blooming world coming into light, I felt joyous and free. These very different yet equally present feelings have made trying to find the balance between light and dark within my writing the hardest part. As a class, we have faced unthinkable loss, but that dark has not been without the light and camaraderie of joy. Dear class of 2020, I would like to say a big congratulations to you, my fellow graduates. Not only is it an accomplishment to graduate high school in general, but our class has faced more obstacles and challenges than thought possible. And yet, we are still here. Together we have grieved. We have danced, we have sung, we have played, and above all, we have loved and had each other's backs. I never thought my senior year would look anything like this. I expected the stress that comes with being a senior and finishing classes. I expected to feel sad about leaving you all and leaving this place that has taught us not only academics, but who we are as people and individuals. I expected to get to spend every bittersweet last with the people I've spent almost every day with for the past six years. Just months ago, we faced the most tragic loss of our sweet Finney and Rooney, who was loved by each of us and who I know loved us in return. My heart aches at the thought that Finn won't be here on this momentous occasion, but I hope that each of you will remember him fondly and smile. I want you to think of him every time you walk onto that baseball field. I want you to feel and hear him cheering you on in that funny baseball voice. Feel him laughing and being silly, and above all, feel him loving and encouraging you to always do your best. This year we have also lost our last bit of time together before we embark on our separate journeys. 2,190 days ago, we walked into this school, eyes wide open as young, naive seventh graders, and we have been talking of this day ever since. It breaks my heart not to watch each of my fellow classmates walk across that stage as they start their lives, following the passions that they have cultivated and prepared for. Although it is not what we wanted, and far from what we expected, we have succeeded. We are all guilty of counting down to the last day of school, but as I'm standing here giving you this speech, I'd give anything to have one last day to be a senior at Hazen Union with all of you. My heart is full of memories. Memories of big soccer games where we're so cold we can't feel our hands. Feeling the pride and exhilaration radiating from the bleachers at basketball games. Gathering in circles and singing country roads as Julius stands in the middle, singing out the verses. Watching plays put on by the drama club that were so good they could be professional. Sitting around bonfires and feeling the comfort of walking the hallways and seeing all the familiar faces. We have put our hearts and souls into this school and each other, and we don't get a formal goodbye. As hard as this is to reckon with, we must understand and also believe that we have left our mark. We, the class of 2020, will be remembered. Our class is full of people from all walks of life. Like a many colored stone mosaic, we are all different in our own way. Yet we come together to create an image of community and strength. I believe wholeheartedly that all of you will change the world for the better. Knowing people like you has made the world worth exploring. Hazen Union, the place where hippies and rednecks coexist relatively peacefully, a place none of us will ever forget. So thank you, Hazen. Thank you for being our home. And thank you, fellow graduates, for making these the best six years of my life. Remember, if you bring as much light as you can to the world, it becomes just that much harder for others to fall into the darkness. May you feel closure. May you always do your best and work your hardest. May your compassion continue to tip the scales towards global goodness. And may you be filled to the brim with excitement and passion for this next chapter in your lives. Because this is it. This is when our lives become our own. We are pleased to have as this year's commencement speaker, a former member of the Hazen faculty. She still works as an educator in a neighboring Vermont community. Please welcome back to Hazen, Monica Morrissey. 
<laughs> well, this isn't how I imagined I would be giving a graduation speech. When I first agreed to this, it was before COVID-19 had disrupted our way of life. I was honored to be asked, and I feel such gratitude for being a part of your lives. I thought about changing parts of my speech to address the new COVID-19 world, but then I decided that this virus doesn't need to determine who we are right now. This too shall pass. It will teach us things about ourselves and our society that we hadn't been aware of before. We all have different viewpoints on everything in our lives. It's like we're pre-programmed with a set of guidelines and rules to follow. Yours are different than mine, and mine are different than all of yours. One thing that I think your class represents is compassion. It's important to have compassion for others, but also for yourself. I know that I was your teacher for some of you in both elementary and middle school, but you all taught me something more than the math I taught you. Some people think that teachers know everything. Well, let me share a little story about something that happened to me in high school. I had okay grades and did most of my homework. The guidance counselor at my high school believed in me and wanted me to sign up for the honors English class. I remember going to that first class. I was on crutches because I had twisted my ankle in soccer practice. The teacher passed out five books on each of our desks. I can still see the pile of books in front of me. Within the next 10 minutes of class, I realized that the teacher expected us to read all five books within the next few months. I was out. I did not read at that time in my life. There was no question in my mind that I was in the wrong place. I raised my hand and explained that I was not going to take this class. I had to hobble out on my crutches in front of everyone and forever I felt that I was less than because I wasn't able to read all of those books. From your viewpoint, seeing me as a teacher, you might think that I always did well in school. I'm here to tell you that even though I read a lot now, I didn't back then. I'm thinking that some of you may have a memory in school similar to this, a time when you didn't feel that you had done what the teachers or your parents thought you should do. Maybe you didn't do the homework, or maybe you didn't redo some of the work that you should have. Or maybe you have strived for perfection and worried that if you didn't do everything that somehow you would be a failure. I know some of you I had in my class didn't always do the math that I asked you to do. It's okay. It's over. It's in the past. Let it go. Move on. Move forward. Right now, life feels out of control. Tomorrow is always an unknown. We can try to plan, but when tomorrow happens, it may or may not go according to the plan. Don't worry if it doesn't go as planned. Embrace whatever happens and realize that every day is gently guiding you in a direction. Everything happens for a reason. If it seems like a negative experience, maybe you needed to learn a lesson in life. If it goes well, then embrace the good feelings. When I was teaching in Orleans Southwest, the vision of our SU was, along with academics, students felt a true sense of belonging. I always wondered how we, as teachers, would know if you all felt a true sense of belonging. Author and researcher Brene Brown states that the opposite of belonging is fitting in. I think what she means is that if I am fitting in, then I am trying to be like everyone else. But if I truly belong, then others accept me as I am and I can be me without having to change to fit in. Have you found a true sense of belonging in your life? Or is your mind trying to convince you to try to be like others? Author Wayne Dyer suggests a, ways, a way to raise our children. He says, I want my children to enjoy life, to value themselves, to be risk takers, to become self-reliant, 
to be free from stress and anxiety, to have peaceful lives, to celebrate their present moments, to experience a lifetime of wellness, to be creative, and above all, to fulfill their highest needs and to feel a sense of purpose. The only way for you to do that is to follow your own path, no matter where it leads you. Curiosity and imagination is what will guide you. When you find the one or two things that you will do all day, every day, without thinking of it as work, then you have found your answer. I remember doing the real game in middle school with you all. Whenever we do that reality game, kids think they know what job they want to have when they grow up. During the game, there are many careers that you all didn't know about. There are still so many opportunities out there that you may still not know about. But when you let curiosity guide you, you will find your path. Life is like climbing a mountain. Each and every step moves us in a direction, sometimes up, sometimes down. Sometimes we get to the top only to find a new mountain ahead of us. What if, instead of always looking ahead to the top of the mountain, you enjoyed each and every step? What if that teacher I had in high school had only placed one book on my desk? Would I have felt more confident in taking the one step to read one book? What if the path includes stops along the way to look at the beauty of life and watch the river flow? What if you tested out one job idea and you didn't like it, so then you changed your mind? What if instead of always doing, we were just being? Each and every day. Enjoying the now instead of ruminating over the past or worrying about the future. Before I was a teacher, one of my favorite jobs that I ever had was being a waitress. I enjoyed serving coffee to the customers and knew that this simple act of filling a coffee cup made them super happy, which in turn made me happy. I loved meeting and talking to new people each and every day. When my younger son was trying to decide what to do after high school, he made one comment to me that I will never forget. He said, Mom, I need to be outside for my work. Whatever I do, I know that I won't be able to sit inside. He was able to find a job where this was possible. I encourage both of my children to think about the following question. What do you want to do every day when you get up out of bed? What would you do where it wouldn't feel like work? When you know the answer to this question, you will then begin to climb your mountain, find your path, and enjoy the journey. Some of you are in the workforce already. Some of you have a year of college already completed. Some of you went to the tech program at GMTCC. Some of you finished your proficiencies at Hazen. Some of you did part-time school. Some of you cooperated with your teachers and parents. And some of you did not. Whatever happened, it's over. Cherish the good memories and know it's time for you to move on. It's time to not only show compassion to others, but show compassion to yourself. It's time to embrace who you are on the inside. That person is who you were meant to be. When you do that, life will guide you to where you are supposed to be. You are the first class to graduate with PLPs, you know, personalized learning plans and proficiencies. These systems were designed for you. They were designed so that you would be able to follow your own path. Life is calling each and every one of you to embrace who you are at your heart. Follow your inner guidance and know that you will make mistakes, but you will also rise up after. I have enjoyed being a part of your journey, and I look forward to seeing where each and every one of you decides to go after your graduation at Hazen Union High School. I hope you are proud to be a wildcat, and you always remember, it's great to be a wildcat, no matter what. I want to leave you with something that I believe in. I believe in all of you. I know you all have something inside you to make this world a better place. As I wrote in both of my books, believe. Believe in signs, 
believe in the unknown, believe in a bigger purpose, believe in miracles, believe that there is good in the world, believe in yourself, just believe. Also, know that no matter what, your parents, family, friends, and teachers believe in you too. When I would tell people I was a middle school math teacher, most people would groan and ask me how I could do it. Weren't middle schoolers downright awful to deal with? My answer was always, I love it. My students are the best. And I meant it. You were all with me during one of the most difficult times in my life when I lost both of my parents to heart disease. You showed compassion when I needed it. There are going to be people in your life who don't support you. Learn from them, but don't listen to them. Walk away and turn towards the people who let you be you. There are so many people who love you for who you are, no matter what. They might not like everything you do or say, but they love and believe in you. Own your story whatever it is. This is a manifesto of the brave and brokenhearted by Brene Brown. There is no greater threat to the critics and the cynics and the fear mongers than those of us who are willing to fall because we have learned how to rise. With skinned knees and bruised hearts, we choose owning our stories of struggle over hiding, over hustling, over pretending. When we deny our stories, they define us. When we run from struggle, we are never free. So we turn toward truth and look it in the eye. We will not be characters in our stories, not villains, not victims, not even heroes. We are the authors of our lives. We write our own daring endings. We craft love from heartbreak, compassion from shame, grace from disappointment, courage from failure. Showing up is our power. Story is our way home. Truth is our song. We are brave and brokenhearted. We are rising strong by Brene Brown. Thank you, and I know that I believe in each and every one of you to be the best you that you can be. One last thing. January 26, I published a blog about how I like to buy toilet paper in bulk. Little did I know that a few months later, buying toilet paper in bulk would become a thing. So, if you are having difficulty in believing anything, and if COVID-19 hasn't taught you anything, always believe that we will have enough toilet paper, or if not, We are Vermonters, and we know how to improvise. Thank you all. Representing the Hazen staff this year and delivering the faculty tribute, I offer a warm welcome to the original Mensch, one of the wisest and kindest people you could ever want to meet, Anya Pfeffer. Dear students of the class of 2020, Thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to you today. While it certainly is not in the format that most of us would prefer, I am extremely grateful to be able to send you off with a few special thoughts. Those of you who know me know that I am not exactly a fan of technology, and uh, you will not be surprised if I'm asking you to get off the screen as quickly as you can. But at the same time, I want to honor the celebration and I want to honor you. So please just give me a few moments of your time and of your attention and I promise I'll keep it short and I'll get right to the point. Students, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for who you are, for all that you stand for and for everything that you have taught me. While I could go on for many, many hours about all the things that I admire in you, let me just focus on a few key concepts. You have firstly taught me about kindness and about how a simple smile can make a huge difference. When you started high school, I was just beginning my second year here at Hazen. And over the last four years, I have time and again been able to observe how deeply you care not only for each other, 
but for your families, for your community, and yes, even for your teachers. I myself have often been fortunate enough to be on the receiving end of your caring, of your smiles, of your wanting to know how I was doing and actually wanting to know the answer to that, of chocolate chip cookies and other treats left in my desk, of cards and letters and notes on the board, even a poster, um, but most importantly, of help whenever I needed it. This is yet another example where Audrey is helping me and us. And I cannot thank you, Audrey, enough for that. No, this was not part of the speech. <laughs> so I need all of you to know that this has meant the world to me. That very, very often it helped me get through a pretty tough day. And that each one of these seemingly small acts of kindness really helped restore my faith in humanity. Secondly, you've taught me about resilience. I thought that growing up in East Germany during and after the Cold War was not exactly a walk in the park. But when I see you face the uncertainties of today, when I see you navigate the challenges of this uncertain world, it's just absolutely mind-boggling to me. And I can only deeply, deeply respect you for that. And I would claim that probably most of the adults listening to this right now and watching this would agree with me that we do not envy you for having to grow up in these times. I want to take that to yet another level and acknowledge how difficult it must be to be a student in today's education system. Our daily attempts to improve it to you must seem like this insane roller coaster. And I can only imagine how frustrating it must often be. But your willingness to show up, your willingness to be you, and your willingness to speak up, to voice your desires, your needs, your concerns, yes, your complaints and your ideas, all of that has been and continues to be incredibly essential to any change. And trust me, we could not do it without you. Thirdly, your skillfulness and your creativity just blow my mind. There truly are absolutely no words to describe how awestruck I am when I hear you sing, when I watch you play sports, when I watch you perform on the stage, when I see you deal with technology and help us adults, when I see your artwork, when I learn about the things that you build, when I read about what you did for the community, all of that is incredibly humbling, but even more so, it's inspiring. You are inspiring. So watching you makes me want to be better at everything that I do. And finally, I want to thank you for reminding me of the importance of joy. Your ability to make me laugh has stopped me in my tracks millions of times. And it has helped me see the sun behind the clouds. You radiate a lightness that, quite honestly, it reminds me <laughs> to not take myself so seriously. I mean, how often have I had what I thought was the perfect lesson plan and all it took for me to get off track was for you to ask a question, to draw a cartoon on the board that we would then discuss or draw more cartoons on, or to simply state the fact that we really needed to go for a walk outside. The quality of that time together and the joy that it has brought to my heart has meant so much more and was worth so much more than anything that I could have attempted to teach you. Instead, it really was you teaching me what really matters. So please know that each and every one of you has what it takes to create for yourself the life that you want. Are you going to make mistakes? Absolutely. But you know how to learn from them, 
and you have the strength to start over. Are you going to find yourself not knowing what to do? Definitely. But your creativity, your awesome, awesome creativity, is always going to help you find a solution. Let that drive you and let it help you invent the things that don't yet exist. Are you going to have days of sadness and despair? Of course, we all do. But you know that bringing a smile to somebody else, no matter whether this is a human or a dog or a horse or a tree, bringing a smile and joy to somebody else will bring joy and meaning back to your life. And that in turn is going to help you take the next step on your own path. One of my mentors would say, in this moment. Life is a journey, so enjoy the ride. I will miss each and of every one of you, and my hope for you is that every day is going to bring you a step closer to your dreams, and that no matter where you are, you will always feel a sense of belonging, a sense of purpose, and gratitude. Thank you so much. Every year I struggle with naming only one person to get the esteemed principles award. I'd really just like to give it to everyone. This year, we got to form a very special friendship with a very special young woman who came to Hardwick to spend the year with us from Germany. By any standard at all, she is a pretty exceptional human being, very personable, possessing a tremendous intellect and very talented. I will never forget the crowds of kids that would gather in the hallway outside the auditorium to listen while she played her marvelous classical piano pieces. Big Tao, we were so saddened when the pandemic snatched you away from us way too early. This year's salutatorian is a true Renaissance woman. She is equal parts scholar and artist. While she was always working hard to keep her learning energized, she is also always intensely passionate and creative and is always engaged in some artistic project, acting, singing, playing the piano. We have all been blessed over the years with her many spectacular performances. Congratulations, Mariana Considine. Hazen's 2020 valedictorian this year probably would not come as any surprise to anyone who knows this young man. He is a highly motivated human being with a passion for engaging interesting ideas. A former member of Hazen's debate team, he is always eager to debate the finer points of an argument. He was the student's representative to the school board for all of last year and brought to the board many interesting perspectives for their consideration. This past year, he was engaged in a year of study abroad in Senegal, and we were all very saddened that his adventures were cut short by the pandemic. However, we are certain that his future will hold many more. He balances his intellectual pursuits with a passion for running. And one of my favorite memories of him was when he joined us for the first seventh grade's 10 mile walk for water project. If the rest of us put in 10 miles that day, he must have quadrupled that number as he ran back and forth, keeping tabs on all the groups scattered along the 10 mile route. Congratulations, Elijah Blue Smith, for being Hazen's 2020 class valedictorian. The following Hazen seniors have completed all of the requirements designated by the Hazen Union School Board and today are being awarded graduation diplomas. Bailey Dennis Allaire. Ryan Nicholas Allen. 
Lillian Nicole Bailey. Jenna Morgan Bassett. Jasmine Bell. Anthony Wyatt Bellavance. Aiden Schuyler Billings. Dylan J. Coder. Mariana Florence Considine. Nicholas Crum. Cody Christopher Davison. Kara Grace Devinger. Tan Big Tao Do. Hunter L. Dupree. Jordan Lee Ewan. Windsor Marlowe Fairbank. Jason Roy Foster. Madeline Grace Foster Pudva. Caleb Patrick Friend. Michelle Gao. Kai Catherine Adrian Gilbert. Audrey F. Grant. Joey Marie Hall. Erin Margaret Halperin. Xavier Hart Marion. Sydney Lee Hayden. Zoe Hislop. Edward Joseph Hoisington Jr. Caitlin Kaiser. Dylan Richard Kempton. McDonald Lanfear. McKenna Lapierre. Abigail Faye Laundry. Aurora Marie Olivia Lawrence. Elijah Gray Lou Smith. Emily May Lurvy. Stephen Michael Martin. Emma Joanne McAllister. Hunter Allen McAllister. Morgan Elizabeth Mercier. Hunter Adam Michaud. Aaron C. Moller. Colton Nimi. Graydon Michael Joseph Noyes. Anthony Patrick. Dylan Jason Ernest Perry. Fabian Reyes. Calvin Paul Raymond Robertson. Julius Gates Rosendahl. Rebecca Roy. Alexander Patrick Stanger. 
Ernesto Schumann Sola. Cynthia Stevens. Kaylee Ann Thorpe. Remington Eugene Vogenschneider. <laughs>